today is the 20th of September 2019 and I'm gonna start making and producing and recording my own record here in Dalich studio so this is the best practice for me to learn as a engineer is to do my own stuff so that I know how to mix and master the song as well so I'm gonna set up the microphone here and I'm gonna switch this camera around and talk to you further okay right now this is in a complete mess but I'm gonna mic up the toms here I'm gonna do everything again I'm gonna tune those floor toms microphone they are too close to the skin I'm recording with my phone here so excuse the poor quality so I'm using the AKG C100 so C1000 for the hats and since I only have about 8 channel here on my Focusrite 1820 normally what I'll do is I'll use an uh, SM7B pointed directly to the center of the hats here but I found that this AKG C1000 is, is, is a really good microphone and the headset I'm using here is it cuts through the mix and it's a Sabian it's not really that expensive but as long as it works and I've used several heads before they are really thick and heavy and doesn't do any good to the mix so I'm using a D112 if you're hearing that noise it is the humidity because when I was recording with Shane Edwards at Karma Sound Studio he always lowers the humidity of the room and when I ask him why he says it's it's good for the sound and so while that do its job it's gonna take a while since this is quite a large room and I've had the drum set up here because the room is not really that good sounding and because we do not really have a proper high ceiling so I want to not get as much of the room sound as possible so I've set up the drums directly at the side here yeah the sound will bounce off this acoustic panel and gets um, absorbed by it so I'm gonna mic up and I'm, I'm just gonna use a mono room pointed directly in between the kit and sorry the toms and the kick drums and I'm gonna get rid of some of the other stuff before it makes noise and especially this bass drum here yeah so mono room I'll, I like to put about for this room actually all the different rooms have different sweet spot so from what I found a mono microphone will sound incredibly good when it's been put about two to three meters away from the drum kit so that's gonna be about here so I'm gonna set up everything yeah before I go on further I'm gonna switch this microphone around because I just got the um, Lewitt LCT240 Pro so I'm gonna switch it and I'm gonna show you guys how I make both my overheads in phase with the snare so that I'll avoid a lot of problems in my mixing later on um, what I'm trying to do here with the limited amount of microphones that I have is trying to get an overall picture of the drum kit as much as possible and I'm only working with eight microphones I'm not gonna mic up the rack tom on this one because I rarely use it I like to use the bigger toms the floor toms and the rack toms on that one slightly bigger than the one on the left here I have a crash two crashes because I like to play on the crash on the pre-chorus and the last chorus just to gives off a little more energy and washy feeling and it's not really a good crash if you hit it by itself but it just cuts through on the mix and it sounds really awesome and I'm gonna switch this guy because this is a small diaphragm condenser and it doesn't really capture a lot of the details that I want compared to a large diaphragm condenser like the LCT240 Pro so I'm gonna switch it around and I've used this on heads before and it's a bit too sharp that's why I like the AKG C1000S for now 
Well, if I'm in a different room, I'll try a different microphone. I'm measuring the distance between the room mics to drum kit here, and I'm pointing the capsule directly towards here. And I've angled the microphone slightly lower so I can capture more of the, the bass here. But I might actually filter about 200 hertz away in my mix from the room microphone. But at the same time, since we do not have high ceilings, it's really pointless for me to put the microphones up in the air because I'll just be capturing you know, too much of the high hats and that's not what I want next as well. So to balance things out, I'll just put them you know, somewhere around here. And I'm pointing the capsules. Can't really see from this angle, but I'm pointing the capsule, which is here. The capsule slightly here towards this side. Right. Go back on the stand. So you can't really see me well. Let's make sure that you can see. Yep, this is better. And hopefully the phone doesn't drop. Alright, I'm gonna set up everything. So the kick drum mics, I like to put them somewhere in the middle. And I do not like the stand. And when I was working with Shane Edwards, he put them right outside here. But for me, I found what works best for me is that I place them somewhere in the middle. Directly at the center of the kick drum, but close to the beater. So that I get those pop 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 sound that I want. And if I have another microphone, I'll use a 57 on the outside and what I'll do on the inside is I'll face the capsule away from the meter here so that I do not have a lot of um, mid-range frequency. Snare mics. For snare I like to use the good old 57. I found is the best snare microphone. I'll show you guys up close what I've done, but for now, just bear with me. I'm gonna check on my kit here. Yep, it's exactly where I want it to be. And the other thing that I like to do is I like high cymbals so that the cymbals floats better, I mean the sound. High cymbals are good, oh. Just to let go. The high cymbals are good, so that it separates, um, it doesn't bleed so much into the, the, the palm microphones. But I get them anyway, so, but, it's always good practice to isolate everything as much as you can. Okay, high cymbals and high crashes. If you look at Dave Grohl, he's such a great drummer and he always plays with high cymbals. Yeah. When I was doing my record with Shane Edwards, he said that high cymbal is good as well. High cymbals is good for recording. Oh, good. So. Someone just try to pass through. Um, not a good idea. Alright, 
Now, how do I measure my overhead to be in phase with the snare? For that, let me switch this microphone first. Okay, right now I've briefly set up the drum kit, but I've not um, measured my overheads to the snare because I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how it's done. Right, so how do you normally do that? Is you'll need cable. Right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take measurement from the snare, the center of the snare, towards your overheads on the left, which is here. And then you're gonna use the same distance. You're gonna measure it to the overhead on your right. The distance from the overhead to the snare, it needs to be the same from that overhead to the snare and this overhead to the snare. If you do not measure them properly, then your microphones will not be in phase. It can be fixed in post-production, whereby you have to drag the, micro the wave form slightly um, behind one another but what you're creating is that you're creating some sort of other issues whereby this microphone will capture um, this microphone will be delayed compared to that microphone when we get into mixing then you can see it for yourself because when you capture stuff when you place stuff together right both this microphone will capture them you know probably 1.1 millisecond delay from the hit but if you do not put them properly in phase and if you drag this waveform slightly behind that microphone then it's going to increase the delay is going to increase to about 3.3 .3 to 5.5 milliseconds but creatively what you want to do is you want to capture everything in phase so that when you hit the snare both of these microphones will capture the sound at the same time and um, the number one problems that will make your recording sounds bad and terrible is face problems. Face problem is always, always better to fix them before you even record. So I'm going to demonstrate how it's done. Hopefully you can see me. And let's focus on the drum kit there. Oh, you can't see the overheads. Yep. All right. So uh, I've got the overheads to the right distance, the right height. So I'm going to start measuring them using my cable. So it's probably too long, but let's do it anyway. Okay, if you're doing live recording, it, it doesn't really matter that much. You do not need to be super technical. But when you're doing studio recordings, like all the sound that you capture will be put under a microscope and then you need to really, you know, you can always hear the flaws that you record in as well. So to avoid that, you need to measure your overheads. So probably use this one, it's best this way. What I like to do is I like to place the overheads somewhere, you know, somewhere towards the sides of the symbols here. And on some cases, I like to measure the overheads to play this side of the symbol. It depends on the song. And if I if I really have a washy symbols, then I might measure them slightly differently and place the overhead microphone slightly differently. I might even place them at the side from from this this angle forward like what um, some engineers like to do but I'm gonna go traditional here for this song and I might change the microphone placement on a different song that I'm gonna record but for now um, is it rolling I don't think it's being recording let me see am I just talking to myself no, it's recording. Yep. So I'm measuring it here. And I'm pointing the capsule. You know, if I'm using a pencil condenser, I'll point the capsule towards the snare. So that I do not capture a lot of the harshness of the symbols when I hit. Because pencil condensers can't really handle that, that well. 
but when I'm using a large diaphragm condenser, it just rolls off the high end a little bit, make it sound, you know, sweet and fine. It's not like you're chewing on sand, you're chewing more on um, one of the nicest candy in the world, if you get what I mean. Alright, so I'm going to measure right now. So my reference point will be here. And yeah, this is, sometimes I like to hit and listen to the sound. And the place where it sounds good, and that's where I'll put the microphone. But since I've had this drum placement here for quite a while now, for about a few months, so I, I and I've done couple of recordings in here as well, probably about five or six songs using the same drum position and briefly I have a rough idea of where it sounds good but if I were to change the drums to a different part of the room completely then I'll, you know, I'll hit the cymbal and then I'll listen to where it sounds good and that's where I'll put the microphone there's nothing as a one trick pony kind of thing you always have to listen because different symbols different different symbols are made from different materials and different materials reflect and gives off a resonance um, differently than the rest of the symbols here so yeah i think i should just start measuring and stop talking you can see that i do not really uh, multitask that well all right so uh, this is probably about one one meter mm, no probably about 120 centimeter so i'll make them up okay so i'll need to push my overhead microphone slightly closer here In studios, you normally have assistant engineer, but for now, I'm just writing and recording my own music. I do not really have an assistant engineer. All right, so now my snare and my overheads are perfectly in phase. Well, you can't celebrate just yet, you gotta analyze the waveform. Well, when I'm doing sound check later on, oh, it's hard to see. Oh man, what? Yep. Get these cables out of the way. All right, one more thing to measure is the distance between the overheads, the capsule to the capsule, not the tip of the microphone. Because you don't record using the tip, you record using the capsule. The center of the capsule to the center of the capsule. Let's see here. Yep. It is about almost twice the length. And from there, I'm able to calculate, you know, the delay or anything like that. In post production. And the last thing to do is to monitor using your eyes. So what I like to do is I'll go extremely far away from the drum kit and look at the drum kit. Hmm. There, I can see one microphone is not positioned correctly. Because when you're too close, you can't really see, at least for me. Almost. Hmm. This one needs to be a bit higher. Because not higher, I meant like the capsule placement needs to be up a bit. Oh, you can't see. How does it look? It looks quite okay, isn't it? From here to here. It looks okay, but does it sound okay? So I'm going 
Take a walk from the side this time around. It looks good. Okay, I'm gonna check the connections here and make sure that everything is okay. I need to mic up this snare. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I told you I was gonna show you how do I mic up the snare. Or where I position the microphone and snare. Okay. All right. Whenever I'm in a session and I'll ask the drummer to play or I do my research if he's or she playing in a, or if she's playing a great band or if she, basically what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to know whether the drummer is a good drummer or not a good drummer if it's a good drummer I'll point the microphone more towards the center and if it's not a good drummer I'll point the microphone away from the center why do I do this? Right, for example, a good drummer will always have consistent hits. Will always hit somewhere around here. And I want to capture that. Because that's where I know the tone of the snare will be. If the person or the musician is not really a good drummer, I'll point it away so that I do not so that I can capture more of an even tone because if you hit it you know if you hit it slightly differently you know the sound is not you're not capturing the imperfections of the snare you are somewhat capturing the you, know, you get what I mean the I don't really know how to explain it to you you're capturing the you're not capturing the direct sound of the hits if that makes sense to you. I hope I do. So the toms, the same rule applies to the toms and the snare. But for me, I know that I'm quite an okay drummer. So I'll point somewhere in between. Same for toms. Same. Everything's the same. And the next thing to do is to check that all your symbols are at the same height and it looks weird from here to see that oh you're pointing the overhead microphone towards the toms and you're pointing that overhead microphones to this towards the crash but it needs to be in place with the snare no matter what and from there i can see that this needs to go down a little bit yeah I'm gonna mic up the snare and I'm gonna do some test recordings. Hopefully this has been quite interesting for you to watch. If not, you can laugh at me for just mumbling to myself in this empty room. Hmm. Alright, get back to you soon. In the control room. Alright, so I'm launching Pro Tools here. Um, again, I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out. I might just leave it raw so you can really see what I've done. It feels weird talking to myself, but no, I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to you guys. Okay, I'm going to launch Pro Tools now. And... Need Phantom 1 to 4. As we progress on, I'm gonna sh show you guys how I control or operate the out outboard gears here in the studio. But for now, let's just call this. I'm gonna record a song anyway, so let's just call it the title of the song, which I can't remember. Um, let's just call it. Um, it's called it Conversations. No, no, I'm not going to call it Conversations. I have another song called Conversations. Mm, I don't know, I can't think. This is the part that always slows me down. I can't even think 
of a title of a song. What's a good title of a song, man? Yeah, I'm gonna call this song Pieces because I just remember that I actually gonna record a song that I did record it here before but as a demo but this time around I'm gonna record for real and the other time around I recorded in mono just to see how it sounds it sounds it doesn't sound good this time around I'm gonna record in stereo right so I do have my settings here room is one if if you're using Pro Tools you're trying to rename stuff you just click command return to go to the next um, track to rename to create a track you click um, shift command n and just click enter and uh, for now I'm using the focus right 1820 the second generation now I only have eight inputs but you know the Beatles recorded the drum kit using just four microphones and they're all the old SM57 I forgot they're not 57 they're not 58 but the really older version. I can't remember at the top of my head. All right, hat is my input two, and then OHL means overhead left, OHR means overhead right, and then I have my snare track five followed by my kick. Right, yep, and then my rectum, then my floor. All good. So roughly, I do know. Well, I can show you. Let me flip the camera around again. All right, roughly I do know the levels here, but I'm gonna click everything to the middle. I mean, set everything to the middle. And then I'll do again. For me, I like to record stuff really hot going in, if you get what I mean. Like, I like to record them really, really crunchy, and I do not like safe recordings, because, you know, safe recordings are boring to me. So, this is Pro Tools, I've set it up. And yeah, let me just put this phone down so I can do the shortcut. But anyway, you just press this to listen back to your recordings. And I'll need to launch Focusrite Control Surface. And then what I'll do is, I'll if I want to send tracks up to the studio, I'll patch out from output number three because this is out in, out in, and into input one down there on the recording room so that I can monitor my headphones while I'm recording. But I can't be bothered to do that right now because um, I don't know. So I'm gonna try and record blindly. I like a little bit of a surprise. So yeah, I'm gonna go out there and record. I'm just gonna, gonna press 3 to record. Oops. Yeah, here we go. Alright, I'm gonna do a rough recording. And yeah, you'll see me out there the next time. Preserve your ears for as long as possible.
need some tuning. Let's do that. Um, the, probably the skins are old, that's why it sounds really dull. Um, let's just tune it real quick. And I'm not going to cut the footage so you can listen to me tune the drums. Mm, probably I'll ruin the, the sound of drums there. sounds a bit higher just to give it off some character back in Pro Tools um, the monitor's not really properly positioned someone's have been messing around so the way I position myself is so that I'm in the center of an equilateral triangle as well so I'm hearing quite well Oops, almost fall. Best way to see me is oh, not there. Uh, you're gonna blow off your ears, just be careful. monitoring the room here room sounds okay hat that sounds like a snare right no kick no all right rectum is too much. Lower it down. Next floor. This floor sounds evil. Hold on. 
on. I'm not hearing properly because the door is open. Yeah. You know, how do you tell if you're not re really hearing properly is you feel a little bit of a, you know, like there's a lot of air space and sounds kind of feels, um, it's hard to describe. But... Yeah, it's not compact, it's not compressed. That's how you tell if you're, if the room is good or not. Um, yeah, she's just trying to speak to me from... She's trying to speak to me from the other side. Yeah, the other day I had the... I had one of the lady here um, become my drummer while I monitor the the sound from <laughs> here and she did a really good job she helped me sound check one of my song which is good so when I have a rough take what I like to do is I like to add some EQs and compressor as well because I do not like to record clean So this is the time whereby I do my filtering and my stereo imaging of the drum kit. So snare and kick will always remain at the center of the mix and the overheads will pan all the way left or right. The hi-hats will go on the right, probably about 43 to 50%, and just so that you balance off the floor toms, which is on the other side. So for this case, I've pet my floor toms to 49, and hats will be on 49, so it's balanced. And since I'm using a mono room microphone, it will just be flat center. And on some cases, I might create another channel and copy it, copy the first channel over and just pan all the way to the left and right, extreme left and right. But for now, I'm not going to do it because I'm just going to keep things simple because this song doesn't really need a lot of, um, you know, it doesn't need tasty burger to it. <laughs> I'm just rambling here, but oh yeah, it's better for me to show you my session then. Right, I'm gonna flip this camera around again and show you. So roughly this is what I've done. Just some panning. I've not done any EQ or compression to it because I come on plus minus to switch between this window to this window. Another shortcut for you to learn. So snare and kick date center. Overheads all the way. So hats 47, floor will be, you know, quite the opposite so that they are quite balanced. Room straight to the center. And I monitor them here. As well as if someone else is playing the drum, I'll monitor them here as well. But since I'm the only one here. And I feel that we're ready to record drums. Oh, are we? All right, so I've done another sound check. And it's time for me to mix. So I'm mixing the raw tracks here. With some EQs and compressions. Right, let's do some mix. And then I'll save the presets. So when I record drums for real, it's just gonna sound good from the start. That's the trick. It's better to show you how I mix it. It might give you a headache, but...
first thing I like to do is to apply one EQ and this EQ is to cut away the 100 hertz I don't need. Alright, so this is what I used to do as a subtraction. Um, I don't even know what I'm saying. So basically that is for subtractive EQ. What am I even saying? So that EQ is used to eliminate the unwanted frequency. Now this EQ is to eliminate the other unwanted frequency. Because different EQs give some different sound. And even though it's plugins, but there is a difference. Alright, so I do not really need um, around 300 hertz, 350 hertz, I'm gonna cut it off. See, it sounds really ugly, so I'm gonna cut it off. So that it's clean. Right, that's all I'll do for the, for the hi-hats. Hi I do not do any gating on the hi-hats because I want the snare hits to be in there as well. Again, I'll go for the same frequency range, this time about 400. Um, cut them off. You know, when I'm mixing, I might even cut even more to make room for the snare and vocals as well. But for now, this will do. Oh. Oh. I've done it wrongly. So I'll probably take this one for the room as well. Let's just solo the room and listen to it. There's too much bass in there, so I'm gonna cut away about 200. I might even go for more. That sounds good. So when I solo everything, but the next thing I'll do is I'll check both my overheads. Are they in phase with another? So what I'll do is I'll expand. If you look here, they're slightly not in face. This is the two high hats, sorry, overheads here. You select this part and this part as well. Yep. You know, they're about, I'd say, well, they're about one millisecond, probably less than one millisecond away. So what I'll do is I'll drag them back. Oh, whoa! I didn't realize something. Oops! I had everything selected. Yeah. So what I want to do now is to check the face. All right. So probably this one is here. Yeah. Not too bad actually. Hmm. Given the fact that it is my first time using a Lubic microphone. If it's just minor, minor, minor changes like this, it's fine to drag.
a couple of things. Let's just undo them. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. See Have you. a good weekend. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. What time go home? Nine. Nah, I'm gonna go back a bit earlier today. Oh, okay. Alright. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. So there are a couple of things that you can do. You know, when every instrument is perfectly in phase, you don't get that characteristic. So, um, you know, from a technical point of view, this is wrong to leave things out of phase from one another. But on a creative side, it is absolutely okay to do so, given the fact that this is nothing. One millisecond away, not in phase, is... It's nothing, you know. A few samples, it's not even one sample, anything like that. So I'm gonna listen to it. You know. Instead of using your eyes, use your ears. I'm gonna listen to it and I'm gonna tweak it and then we're gonna see how. I've done that and I've lost where the heck am I? Let's go over here. See they're not there are just a few sample away as you can see. It's not a big deal. And this is one of the decisions that as a engineer you have to make. Mm -hmm. That's fine, see this is not looking over here. So they're, they're okay, actually, they're not really that bad. So if you look here, the top here is just a few sample, not in phase. Didn't really bother me, can't really hear the difference anyway. But for experiment and for us to learn, let's just drag it back. Probably, that's fine. Let's find the most common area. Um, let's do somewhere here. Mm, let's do here. Since we have the heads there. All right, so. You know what, it doesn't really make any difference. Yeah. I'm not, all right, I'm not gonna bother. This is nitty, um, this kind of thing is just some nitty gritty kind of thing I can't hear the difference technically it is incorrect but creatively you know can't really hear the difference so why bother and I'm hearing some overtones there ringing if you can really hear it snare yeah ring is coming from the snare you know what once I start mixing you can't really hear it anyway mm, kicks really snappy I'll probably go about 50 now, this is the 30, and then I want to boost some frequency in the kick, probably around 50 or 60. Mm. Of course, all these will get adjusted. Once I start mixing, but this is just some rough. 
I probably do not want any 350 in there. It's a bit rough. So automatically it sounds clean. And I'll go and do adjust the frequency as well once I start mixing. Again, the snare we do not need a hundred hertz, leave it for the kick and bass. But what I want to do is I want to boost slightly 120 because that's where I get the body of the snare. Not a bit, just a little white, just a little bit. I'll boost about 10, keep the crack on the snare. Let's find a hit when where there's um, some red tones being played in the solo right here. Oh, it is so beautifully out of tune, mate. <laughs> Let's see. I do not need there. Mm, let's cut over as well. Same for floor toms, although I might change it, of course, once I start mixing, but let's do some floor toms. Span it a bit here. If you realize something, I've been monitoring in low volume because I don't want to kill my ears before I start recording. So right, right now, everything here is good. Apart from the, floor, the rec toms, I might give it a little tune before I start recording again. But new playlist, control, and I don't know, slash, inverted slash, whatever. New playlist, command, S to save. And then what I want to do is I want to do some guitars, so I'm gonna do probably four, and yeah, this is, I call them rhythm, right, because I'm gonna layer them, rhythm, right, layer, so rhythm left, rhythm, right, L means layer, rhythm, left, L means layer, and everything is in playlist mode. Okay. I'm gonna plug in some guitar and we're gonna play some guitar. Go on the track, click, click track, and then you can change the metronome speed. Let's just try 140 here. Right, I'm gonna give myself some distortion because this is gonna be a rock song. I like rock music. Let's go to the sands and now this is just for sample. This is just for, for so that I can drum because I'm gonna drum first and then I'm gonna quantize my drumming and then I'll lay all the other instruments over. That's how it's done. Have blown, you must have blown your ears. Right. I'll just put you over here, man. Come on, don't do this to me. Come on. Yep.
let's knock it down a little bit and let's increase the volume of the metronome a little bit turn down my volume a little bit go again Somewhere in the middle, 150. See how it goes. Um, yeah. Make the metronome a little louder. It's still a bit too fast. Let's go back to 140. And there's a tempo that I recorded it the other time. is not in tune I'll be back okay so now I'm back and I'm gonna record the guitar finally <laughs> 